Hi, I'm uh, Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. So uh, recently I was asked to do a stage PCI of a severely stenosed RCA uh, to complete revascularization after an anterior STEMI. Uh, but we were in for a big surprise. The patient is a 60-year-old woman uh, who presented to the ED with several hours of chest pain. Uh, other than smoking, uh, she had no significant past medical history. Uh, she did not look that great. Um, in the ED, she was diaphoretic and hypotensive. Her blood pressure was 82 over uh, 60. The ECG showed obvious anterior ST elevations, and we uh, rushed her uh, to the cath lab. Uh, we went straight for the culprit. Um, as you can see here, uh, the circumflex has only mild disease. There is a fairly good size uh, ramus uh, with mild to moderate uh, proximal stenosis. Uh, the obvious culprit uh, is the complete occlusion uh, of the proximal LED. Uh, we engaged the left main with a six French uh, EBU three and a half. Uh, the LED wired fairly easily with a uh, 180 centimeter uh, run through wire and we pre-dilated with a 2O by 12 uh, compliant balloon. And here is what the LED looked like after pre-dilation. Uh, you can see a long segment of stenosis uh, from the proximal uh, to the mid-segment of the LED. Uh, the rest of the LED uh, actually looks uh, quite good. So we went ahead and placed a uh, 275 by 30, uh, 38 millimeter uh, DES to cover uh, the long segment of um, a disease in the LED. And we uh, sequentially post-dilated uh, with up to a 3.75 millimeter NC balloon uh, using IVIS uh, to help us uh, size the uh, post-dilation balloon. And here is the uh, final angiographic result in the LED, uh, which uh, we thought looked uh, quite uh, satisfactory. So we then engaged the uh, non-culprit RCA, uh, which you see here. There is a uh, critical lesion at the ostium of the RCA, uh, followed by several sequential, very severe stenoses uh, in the mid uh, to distal uh, RCA. So um, here was our plan. Uh, the patient looked better. Uh, her chest pain was completely gone, uh, but her blood pressure was still soft. Uh, she was still on a low dose uh, leave a fed infusion. Probably uh, sky B to C shock, uh, but her hemodynamics uh, were improving. Uh, we decided to place a balloon pump uh, to support her and uh, cool her off in the ICU uh, with a low threshold uh, to transfer her to a tertiary center for impella uh, if, if uh, she went back uh, the wrong way. And uh, if she did okay, uh, then we would bring her back uh, for a staged uh, PCI of the RCA. Uh, in the ICU, uh, she continued to improve. Um, Levofed uh, was weaned off within a few hours, and uh, she was uh, started on um, guideline-directed medical therapy. Uh, she had a big MI. Uh, her uh, troponin peaked at over 10,000 uh, nanograms per liter. Uh, however, thankfully, her left ventricular function uh, remained fairly well preserved. The EF was uh, 50 to 55%, uh, with only apical and entroseptal hypokinesis. So uh, after a couple of days, we uh, brought her back to the cath lab uh, for the planned uh, stage PCI of the RCA. And here is our uh, setup shot uh, for that stage PCI. Wow, uh, we uh, did a, we all did a double take. Is this even the same patient? All of the uh, severe stenoses in the RCA are gone. Uh, the ostium now looks completely normal. Uh, the stenoses uh, in the mid to distal RCA all disappeared. Uh, the only thing that I saw was this mild residual mid RCA stenosis that doesn't even meet uh, my criteria for FFR. So could the RCA lesions have been due to an atypical pattern of multifocal coronary vasospasm or Prinz metal angina? I don't know how else to explain it. This was really quite striking. I briefly considered whether the RCA stenosis could have been thrombus that had dissolved, but there was no dye staining or haziness and really looked more like discrete uh, constrictions rather than thrombus. And then it dawned on me. Uh, if the RCA was vasospasm, 
Could the LED have been vasospasm as well, just more severe uh, with a superimposed thrombus? Well, um, hindsight is always 2020, and I, I suppose that might have been the case, but frankly, uh, given uh, how sick the patient was when she presented, I'm not sure we would have done anything different. So I, I took another picture of the left coronary system. Uh, the, the LED stent looked fine, but look at the ramus. Um, there was a moderate stenosis in the proximal ramus before, but now it's also gone. So that was probably vasospasm as well. So coronary vasospasm doesn't usually have such a dramatic presentation. More commonly, we'll see patients with typical angina, but andrographically normal coronary arteries, unless you happen to cath the patient in the middle of a vasospastic episode. The condition is commonly known as uh, Prince metal angina or vasospastic angina or variant angina. The characteristic feature is an abnormal uh, vasoconstrictive response, uh, which can be focal or affect uh, multiple uh, vascular beds. The mechanism is not completely clear. Uh, there are many possible triggers. Uh, anxiety and hyperventilation are classic, but stimulants, alcohol, uh, emotional stress can also cause it. Uh, magnesium deficiency is also thought to uh, play a role. And importantly, uh, beta blockers, especially uh, non-selective beta blockers, uh, can trigger and worsen uh, the situation. Uh, smoking is also a risk factor. And it seems that other vasospastic conditions, such as Raynaud's and migraines, uh, are also uh, risk factors. So how do you treat Prince Metal? Uh, well, uh, there is not a lot of data, but there are a few things uh, that seem to make sense. Now, first, uh, you want to try to avoid the trigger. So obviously stop smoking, avoid alcohol, reduce stress, and, and consider uh, magnesium uh, supplementation. The first line treatment is usually calcium channel blockers, and both uh, dihydropyridine and non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers uh, work. And the second line treatment is uh, 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 long-acting nitrates, and these are usually used in addition uh, to the calcium channel blockers. Stands may have a role. Uh, they may have some benefit for uh, preventing spasm, but the data is pretty scant. And the evidence for ICD is also lacking, but certainly it may be reasonable in select cases uh, to uh, prevent uh, sudden cardiac death. Now, there are a few things that we know doesn't work. Um, aspirin uh, does not seem to be beneficial for Prince metal angina and theoretically may actually uh, aggravate the spasm. Uh, beta blockers uh, should be, especially the non-selective uh, beta blockers, should be avoided uh, for patients with Prince metal. Uh, they can cause unopposed uh, alpha-mediated coronary vasoconstriction and possibly trigger or worsen uh, the condition. If the patient needs to be on a beta blocker for whatever reason, uh, use uh, libidolol or carvedilol, uh, which are beta blockers uh, that also have um, alpha-blocking activity. All right, uh, take-home messages. Um, coronary vasoconstriction due to uh, Prince metal uh, can be focal or diffuse. Uh, parents can get angina, dramatic ST elevations, and cardiogenic shock, and sometimes even cardiac arrest. Uh, treatment uh, includes uh, calcium channel blockers and nitrates, and uh, uh, severe uh, refractory patients may actually need to go to the cath lab for uh, direct uh, intracoronary uh, vasodilators. ICDs can be considered uh, for prevention of uh, sudden cardiac death. And remember to avoid uh, beta blockers in Prince metal. And if a beta blocker is absolutely necessary, uh, uh, use one or choose one uh, with alpha blocking activity, uh, such as libidolol or uh, carvedilol. Thank you for watching.